What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. And today in front of me, random pretty much, right? Well, the reason I have all these nozzles, heat breaks and filament on the table today is because I want to talk to you guys about nozzles and materials and what's good with what material and why you should use it. Let's get into it. So today in front of me, as you can see, I have all these nozzles and heat breaks with a whole bunch of beauty shots for you guys to show you. So we'll start off with your generic brass nozzles, okay? So the generic brass nozzles here, great for PLA, PETG, nylon, you can use it for all kinds of stuff. Um, it works all around. It's very thermally conductive, so it heats up really well. Brass nozzles work great. Now there are differences. When you buy a clone nozzle compared to, let's say, an official E3D nozzle, uh, the quality in the machining is definitely going to vary, whereas a company like E3D, Slice Engineering, or Micro Swiss, they're there for us. They want us to have a product that works well. So you get what you pay for in that realm. But overall, if you find that the clone nozzles work good, I, I don't seem to have too bad of a problem with them. I get the odd one that jams up or something's not been milled right. It does happen from time to time, but for a couple bucks, throwaways, it's great, all right? Moving forward, we have stainless steel. Now, this one here, guys, I, to be honest with you, it's a tricky one to print with because stainless steel, it just wants to get rid of the heat. It's like having your titanium heat break. Uh, it just dissipates the heat really well. So. What stainless steel is good for though, it is really, really good for anything you're doing food grade. So if you're using an ESD safe PETG from say 3DX tech where you can use this in food grade products, then great. You know, you're gonna wanna only print with stainless steel heat brakes, stainless steel nozzles, and it's, it's not gonna be fun, I can promise you that. But that is a whole nother topic for another video. But for stainless steel, uh, I only really recommend this if you need food safe stuff. So it's not a very popular nozzle due to the fact that the heat dissipation just isn't, it, it's just crazy. It, it's not gonna stay hot. All right. Next, we got my favorite, hardened steel. For seven, I think there's $7.95 guys Canadian, maybe $8.95, don't quote me on the price though. Um, but yeah, hardened steel, I use it for everything. Uh, it's not. It's not gonna work thermally conductive like brass is. It's, it's not gonna, it's just not gonna do that. But still maybe five degrees more max with a hardened steel nozzle, I find, depending on your speeds now. That, that, that's a, again, another topic for another video for speed printing. But I print TPU on these, I print wood filaments. For example, like this awesome spectrum wood filament we've got here. So this stuff's, this stuff's great. Um, print's really wonderful, but if you put this through a brass nozzle, I'd say within, with this stuff, I'd say within half the roll, your 0.4 nozzle, if it doesn't jam up, is probably going to be a, close to a 0.5. Uh, I always recommend 0.6. So when you're getting into hardened steel, um, you're probably going to move up to a 0.6 or a 0.8 um, with the hardened steel. Now something else a lot of people will overlook, glow in the dark filaments. Again, Spectrum. Love this line, guys. <clears throat> I, I only have good things to say about these guys. I've been nothing but impressed with their filament. Um, but glow in the darks, so they've got metals and stuff in them. And again, they'll eat away at your brass nozzles. So you're gonna want to avoid things like wood, glow in the dark. And let's just take a look at this. Is, this stuff is awesome. This is 3D x Tech carbon fiber, nylon. This is PA6. Uh, this is again for more, maybe more advanced users. Comes nice and vacuum sealed. Uh, I'm not gonna open it up due to the fact that they do come in this nice vacuum sealed bag that if I uh, actually, no, it's got a heat press seal in it. It does come resealable. Not gonna open this one, but uh, 
the, it's carbon fiber chunk. So it's got 15% carbon in there. And I can tell you, if you use a brass nozzle in one print, we've tested this, you will be going through to about a 0.1 millimeter nozzle in one print. And I'd say maybe a four hour print. It, it literally ate right through a brass nozzle. That's where one of my favorite things, you can use the hardened steel. Um, the 0.6 is gonna be, that's it. You're not doing 0.4 on this stuff. Uh, you crank the temperatures, nozzle plugging is probably gonna happen. So slow printing would be a must on a 0.4. You definitely will need to be an experienced user to print something like Nylon X from uh, 3DX Tech. But 0.6 hardened steel, you can use the clone ones. I have good results with them. A lot of our staff have good results with them. So I, I honestly, I can't complain about the clone ones. Mind you, if you really want to step it up, and this is what I personally use, is the Slice Engineering Vanadium nozzles, or I use the Micro Swiss, uh, the M2 hardened steel nozzles for stuff like this, works great. Um, I guess the temps go up a bit. Uh, five to 10 degrees, uh, 10 degrees on more of the polymer based products. Now this is gonna be great for, I mean everything. I've even I've printed TPU through this stuff. It's vanadium is the metal. Um, absolutely wonderful. Uh, the, sh the, the printer downstairs we have, the Formbot Trudon. Uh, we've had it for going on three years now. And since it's been about maybe a year or so on the same 0.6 nozzle in our uh, slice engineering copper head on our Trudon. So, and it, and believe me, carbons, glass fibers, everything goes through that machine, guys. Never let me down. And now this is an E3D style nozzle. So all your E3D style hot ends are gonna fit this. Um, you can even get, they've got their own copper head or their mosquito you can, you can add as well. Um, now, something really cool you guys maybe have heard of or maybe haven't, the super volcano stuff. These nozzles are huge. This is great for high flow jobs on printers like the Modex, giant big printers, um, or just needing to pump out work. Uh, this is, again, it's brass, so you're just gonna be using this, and a nozzle like this, I would only assume any of you would be using 0.6 or higher, um, just for the, the flow rate alone. Uh, I see a lot of guys using the one mil nozzles um, on the Modex machines things like that. Um, you also have Nozzle X from E3D. So let's move on to that. They brought up a volcano one here. Um, so Nozzle X, uh, they're great nozzles and they're pricey. You do get what you pay for. I do love the fact of the coating that's on them. Uh, it stops the material from sticking on them a lot. And uh, I've never had a problem printing abrasives through it. So it works great again, but you pay a premium price. When you get, you know, good machined parts from Slice Engineering, E3D, Micro Swiss, you're gonna get a quality product. I know every time I put a new Micro Swiss nozzle on my own personal machine or a machine here for a customer when I do a repair, they're not gonna have a problem printing and I'm not gonna have a problem doing my test print. So yeah, you pay a premium price, but you get what you pay for. I'm gonna throw one more thing out there for you guys at the end here, just to kind of throw things into perspective. If you wanna print some of these materials, this is a recommendation. If you just have a stock ender machine, you can go ahead and, you know, grab yourself a clone $7 hard nozzle. You wanna experiment with some glow in the dark, grab a 0.6 MK8 hardened steel, good to go. If you wanna start getting into the 3DX tech stuff, even say the wood filaments, it helps to have yourself an all metal heat break. Now, I've just brought an E3D one up here to show you guys. Slice Engineering makes them, I actually did bring one up. You can just install directly into your uh, stock ender and put their copper head on if you wanted to, uh, the heat block. But the nice thing about all metal heat breaks is with abrasive materials, they'll tend to really push that Bowden tube away from the nozzle. And it's it, that happens with PLA. So with the abrasives, it's even worse. Um, they'll drag inside the tube a little bit and help pull it away from the nozzle. Um, but when you have an all metal heat break, that alleviates that problem. So we will get a close up shot of this. We'll do the slice engineering stuff because uh, I must say for high temperature, my favorite company, um, you know, and then for everything else I use Micro Swiss. For now, anyways, I know Micro Swiss has some stuff in the making, so I still love them both. So we'll take this vanadium nozzle to this 
all metal heat break here. Now you can see when they join inside the heat break, or sorry, excuse me, the heat block, they're gonna heat seat together. Now you don't have to worry about it backing off or pulling away because you go ahead and heat your printer up to that maximum temperature it can heat at, and then you give that nozzle just a little bit extra tighten in the hot block. And then you don't have to worry about that whole nonsense of when you've got a Bowden tube sitting on the top of your nozzle and you've got carbon running through it and the carbon's abrasive so it's dragging against the, the, um, the Bowden tube, in turn pulling that Bowden tube away from the nozzle. So guys, I hope this was really informative to you. Uh, I really wanted to bring this video out and talk to you guys about nozzles and things like that so that way you guys could have a better understanding of you know maybe what might be best suited for your needs. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to leave us a like. If you got any video ideas you guys really want to see, feel free, post them in the comments because we're open to ideas and we want to give you guys what you want to see. So don't forget to leave us a comment, throw us a share, and we'll see you in the next video.